Recording is on. Recording is on. Okay, cool. I think it's recording. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll get started. Um, this this whole um, conference or meeting basically came out of a, a forum thread on the open source architecture <laughs> community. Uh, someone had posted that um, they're basically wondering how to get started in Blender BIM, and and you know I and some other people kind of were trying to help them and at a certain point i was like hey we should just kind of schedule a um kind of a round table discussion to uh just go through how to use blender bim um because really at this point it's so early it's alpha you know uh, software that no one's really an expert right now i've used it um i feel i'm okay at it but you know it's still early days and so um I think a round table format would work better where I can, you know, I can start going through the things I know. Um, and I'm sure there's points where people on this call may know more than I do or whatever, and can raise their hand and chime in to say, Hey, you know, we could do it. You can do it this way or whatever. And potentially maybe just actually pass the baton, uh, pass the, the screen sharing to you. Um, if you want to share it on your side, um as well so uh i would chat a little bit here uh, with a couple of people um uh, initially my name is ryan schultz i started a firm opening design about uh 10 years ago basically looks at trying to apply open source paradigm to our industry to the construction industry um and so you know harnessing open source applications like FreeCAD and, and Blender BIM is kind of a natural transition. For our firm, uh, we don't use Blender BIM or FreeCAD wholesale. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think they're at that level for production yet, but we, we have been harnessing them in kind of certain, I call them wedge workflows, <laughs> where um, we try to find a, a very tight part of the drafting process and try to use blender bim for that process uh, in particular it's um, drafting up large or modeling up large scale details and very uh, small um, uh, details and then exporting that those out you know with ifc into revit where we annotate annotate it but I, you know, the days of actually doing the annotating in Blender BIM, I think are very close. Um, and I know you can do it in FreeCAD, but um, so we're trying to harness, you know, these open source solutions as much as possible. Um, you know, I don't feel comfortable yet that it's as efficient, but we're trying our best. So, so anyways, um, so yeah, I'll just start my, uh, share my screen and just kind of start jumping into it. Again, please, I want this to be, um, more of a conversation than me just yelling at you. <laughs> it's about enough stuff. So if you have a question, if I'm running through or you have a comment, you want to help, you know, just just raise don't raise your hand, just say something. Cause I because I'm not gonna see the hand raising on um on Jitsi here. So um let's see here. Share my screen. First and foremost, share screen. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Do entire screen. Okay. I think, do you, can you see my screen, everybody? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, can you see this window? I just popped up a different window. I just want to make sure we can see that. Mm, no, we still see the uh, browser. Yeah, you have to select maybe the screen kind of. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Uh, let's see here. I think I got it. Can you see that now, window screen? Yeah, file explorer. Now. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Uh, okay. 
so basically start at the, you know in, installing blender bim i think is a good place to start here um so i already have blender bim installed i'm going to uh remove that um to just to go through the steps on installing so this might this path here might be different for everybody that's my path you know where blender bim is stored along with other scripts i'm using blender bim 3.1 Okay, so I'm essentially just going to delete this folder. Okay. To here, all right. To go, uh, basically, find the latest version of Blender BIM. Um, I go to the GitHub for IFC Open Shell. It's at this address here. Um, I don't know the full story and why um, Blender BIM is associated with IFC OpenShell. Maybe someone can chime in. From what I heard, Thomas, the main developer behind Open Open um, Shell, he started kind of a Blender uh, plugin, and then Dion, the major developer behind Blender BIM, kind of added on to that, and that's why it's still in this repo. Also, too, I think a lot of the code associated with Blender BIM is agnostic. And so it do, you don't necessarily need it to be attached to Blender BIM. So more of the reason just to keep it in uh, this repo. But nonetheless, um, you know, go to this address here and go to releases. Um, they have a bot, a release bot, which is very awesome, that basically creates a bundled um, executable uh, in install packages for almost every day that you know the commits are, are posted. So I just go to the latest uh, version here and you can see various um, open uh, software or- um, Python versions, right? And uh, OS, What's that, sorry? Various OS version. The yeah, operating. operating system, yes, sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Ayans. So various operating systems here um the number within it you know this 3 9 and, and 3 10 that is i believe the python uh version um that's kind of installed with blender and it's i think coincidentally it, they're not really tied but coincidentally if you're using blender 3.1 um you're going to want to use this uh, 3 10 which is i think you know so coincidentally, the numbers line up. I don't think they're connected. Is that correct, Ionis? Uh, yeah, they're not connect corrected. Connected. Okay. Like okay. for uh, Blender 3, you need the uh, 3.9 Python. Right. OK. But yeah, there's, it's just coincidental that those numbers line up. So anyways, I got three um, windows. I'm going to just click on this, and then it prompts you to download it. So. Okay, uh, I'm going to start Blender Bin then. So a lot of you probably already know this, go under preferences. And also too, I've, I've only started using Blender about a year ago. I'm not a Blender master, so you know I might stumble around uh, on this as well, but just let me know. Um, so click on install, navigate to where you uh, saved it and then double click it takes a while and then uh, click on this little checkbox here. So then it's installed. So there's, you know, various preferences associated with it. So won't get into that. Um, we could cover that if we have time later, but so I'll close that. Um, all right, so starting a project. Starting a project, you would go under the scene properties here and go down to IFC project info. And I usually just use what's default, defaulted here. I'm in the United States, so Imperial obviously makes sense. Um, this is the schema to use. I usually IFC four, um, but since we're working with Revit and importing, Re Revit still doesn't really use IFC four that great. So I still use two by three, but for this, I'll just do IFC four. Just keep all those. You can also 
with the template, you can also add in a demo library, which has, you know, stock windows and doors and that type of thing, but I'm just going to do a blank. So, um, create project. And here you can see how it, um, automatically gives you a hierarchy, um, in your project, I've seen project or let's see here, a story is within a building, the buildings within a site, within a project. Um, anyone have anything to add at this point? Not for now. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, okay. All right. So th the easiest, I guess, first step on uh, to you know, create objects is this default um, file already had some objects in it. So if you want to you know, click on that and let's say we're just going to create that as a wall, a generic wall. So go here, um, I see element and go to wall. And I usually have this be kind of just default to what it is. You know, you might have scenarios where it's um, not defined. I'll click on not defined. There's more to that, but for the, the sake, you can keep it. And I usually keep the context the, the same here. Um, I'm not 100% on context yet, um, but I know that, you know, if you- it should be that for, for IFC element, let's say it should be model body, I think, model view, yes. Okay, sure. So if, if, you, if you were using like annotation or whatever, maybe you'd use, you know, these, but for, you know, for the sake of this, it's the model body is the, the context you want. So, so then you assign it. You, um, at this point, you can um, drag it into the, your hierarchy structure here so that in the outliner, it's basically under um, your first story here, but um, in the back end IFC, it's not necessarily tied to that. And so if you want to tie it or associate it with a spatial container, it's, it's called, you would, uh, you know, click on the object and go to the spatial container here and then navigate to say my story and sign container. Yeah. So here that object then is assigned to that, that story. Uh, actually, that's the same thing you are doing. Let's say if you drag and drop, when you save it, it's actually doing this uh, operation that uh, you do. Oh, okay. So, so if you... Uh, yes, it's the same thing, let's say. Okay. So, yeah, that's great. So it sounds like if you when you save the project that it, it, it does that automatically if it's an outliner correctly. Um, exactly. But I, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily show up until you close and open up um i think if you do save project and then uh, maybe the up, uh, refresh icon next to the save project maybe you will see it uh, updated some stuff okay that, that they're not updated in real time let's say while you're doing them uh, in the ui gotcha okay that's great to know um this is a quick blender question but yep. can you just um there's three little icons up in that kind of project in the scene collection there there's a upside down orange triangle and then a, a, a up up a little bit there yeah okay um, yeah so there's an upside down orange triangle next to ifc wall cube there and there's a green fidget spinner looking thing and then there's a squiggle at the ifc building one above it can you what are the three icons what do those mean are those blender you're, things? You're, these here you're yeah. saying yep okay those are yeah blender native like um icons um, I think the triangle is indication of that it's a mesh, um, blender mesh, essentially. Yes. The the little star here means that it's an empty, it's basically uh, a point in space. And the empty is used a lot here, and I'm sure other blender workflows is kind of containing information and data. Okay. So, um, so yeah, it's just, it's called an empty. It's, what it is and then these these boxes here the, the boxes is a blender specific um way to organize things they're basically folders i guess if you won't lack for a better term um that you can kind of organize your your scene with so does that does that answer your question yeah except what's the green thing uh, oh the green thing yeah 
you know what i do not it's the mess this the green thing is the is the is the mess attached to the to the object because yeah. there is the object the, the blender object and then you have a mess attached a geometry so this is uh, represents uh, the mess yeah Auto button, uh, basically, it's the geometry. It doesn't have to be a mess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, don't don't worry. I'm a little confused on that on my side, but uh, once you start working with it, that you know. You do, Just to put in another little, uh, if if people are not used to working with this, Ryan, uh, if you choose the collection that you intend to create your geometry in say if you chose the uh, building story mm -hmm. you would create it within that collection when okay, you create sure. new geometry sure uh, so another, an another another thing yes. that uh, also worried me a lot when i started with it is when you try to rename something because you don't want to have in most cases you want to you don't want it to be my site or my building or my story for that matter when you try to rename this it's important you use the empty the empty okay. actually holds no geometry but it's a placeholder yep. um, if you want to rename it's the empty you use to rename it yeah well, let's actually just go through that so um yeah so who, who's speaking right now is it Peter? It's Peter, yeah. Oh, Peter. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, so, if you want to change the story name, select the empty, like Peter was saying, and go to, let's see here, I see attributes, is it? And say, you know, first floor or whatever. And then save. And I think it should, of course, not. That thing. Uh, usually it changes, doesn't it? Or it has in the past. It does yeah yeah it should change. you know what maybe because i didn't uh save yet so yeah that's probably it so okay so you we started a project and you want to save it and so it'll prompt you to save the blender file first and so it's untitled and save save and then it'll prompt you to uh, save the ifc file and you usually save in the same location so the thing with blender bim is that the blender file and the ifc file are like married and should be married to the end of time <laughs> but but you could also say yeah, uh, the ifc only this is true this is true i should not say that i should not say that but if you use um if you use you know, modifiers and collection instances the things that are yes. blender specific that don't have a counterpart yet in ifc land which you know hopefully they will someday <laughs> that you know you can just use the ifc file but if yeah if you're using those blender specific things it's good to keep those together and so as you're working um it's a good idea to both say save and also export out and it won't oh shit. there's a glitchy let's see here let's see if we can do it again it should not ask me again Let me try something here. Save project. Okay, whatever. There was a couple of glitches there, but the, the workflow is to both save and export. And you don't necessarily have to do this. There's a button here that says save project um, that does the same thing. It saves the Blender file and then it also exports out the IFC file. So you can just save project. Or this, I use this quite a bit, do a save as to rename that IFC file somewhere else. So maybe let's try that again. No. Anyone have clues on why that's not changing? Yeah, try try it again, Ryan. Oh. I believe, yeah. Okay. And don't be quite as fast. The the um, circle you have there. When when you edit it, if you edit. Oh, okay. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I believe so. No, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah. Think this. Not okay. <laughs> Sorry, something got broken there. I don't, I don't know why and how. 
<laughs> well, it should be that you did it. Maybe, no, it. maybe you can try to name the collection. But... Let's try this again. Uh, I'm just going to start a new project. It's probably <laughs> a good, great project. Okay. I'm going to just create it as a yeah. so save. I'm going to save. And I'm titling. I'm going to change the story name. There it goes. I don't know what that. You. This is what you'll run into. <laughs> and if if you do, if you do run into these kind of glitches, I'm sorry, Dan. If this is not what you want. <laughs> But uh, if you run into a glitch, you can go to this website and add a new issue because, um, you know, glitches happen. So, all right. That's good. So thank you, Peter, for that tidbit. Um, okay. So we have this object here. Um, it's just it, it kind of a isolated wall. The... It's just a mesh right now. It doesn't have any nice extrusions. But if you want to basically turn that dumb mesh into an extrusion from IFC's eyes, you can go to um, object data properties here and use one of these here where you can say, um, let's update mesh as triangle extrusion. So what that does is that takes that cube basically and assigns it a rectangular profile and an extrusion direction. So if you did that and then go to get representation IFC, you can see those parameters. You can see the X dimension, which you can change here. You can change you know, the Y dimension on that rectangle, and then you can also change the, the, the depth of it as well. You can, you know, just like any Blender um, workflow, you can do this manually, do the extrusion direction. Um, to When you save this out, like Ionis had mentioned, when you save this out, it remembers that. But just a little word of warning, if you do that manually, change that extrusion direction. If you go back and to use this again, it'll re-snap back to that. So if you don't want it to do that, um, you click on it and say update representation. And now it should work. Yes, this is chunky, um, but it's those quirky little things I think that'll obviously when the user interface gets improved, that it'll be a little more intuitive. <clears throat> um, Can I butt in again, Ryan? Yeah, Sorry. 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 No, Sorry. yeah, no, I want. I want. Sorry to be too much, but uh, oh. if if when you do it manually, if you apply scale, will that uh, sort of sort this problem because Apply scale to the object. If you if you now try to scale it manually first, like change the extrusion manually. Okay, sure. Uh, let me try that. Okay. I think it, if you did, if you didn't, if you, if you, up, up. no, 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 no. Oh, okay, because this is pure internal blender because oh, correct. Blender also has an internal internal scale factor. Okay. If you go to item, I think you'll find it maybe. Or you can view it. Yeah, on the tabs. No, to the left. To the left. Oh, sorry. On the, on the bar, the vertical bar there. Okay. And you... No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we can do it another way. Go to object, second row. Okay. No, on top, top menus. Okay. Where you go, object mode. Yeah. Okay. Object. Okay. Uh, and then you hit apply or control A in Blender Start. No, up. Yep. Scale. Apply scale. Will, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, will this, if you now try the same, what will, um, what will happen now? I'm curious. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it snaps back. So 
I think yeah. what you would have to do if you did that, I think you would have to click on it and say update representation. Yes. And and then then it works. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, you don't have to do this update representation um, if you're not going to basically use these, you know, values here because when you save out to that the IFC file, it remembers that, right, Ianis? Uh, I don't. I didn't understand what you said. No. So if I uh, let's see here, I don't know if this is. I before if I did not do update representation, right? If I didn't do that and I changed the scale or extruded it manually, it wouldn't take it. Yes, the scale it doesn't take it at all. You have to apply it. Let's see. But even when you apply it, I think then you have to maybe click update representation or something like that. Yes. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I think that you don't have to do upper date representation um if you just scale uh, through blender if, if you like you save out the x uh, ifc file right and then you open it again then it remembers right uh yes in general it remembers yeah okay okay what or, to, you... or to put it another way ryan and Jonas, uh it doesn't really remember but i rem <laughs> i seem to remember that dion put this into the save function so that when you save to or export to IFC, if you have a scale that is not one in Blender, it will apply the scale you have. So when you enter, when you open it again from the IFC, you will have the scale applied. Okay. Gotcha. Is that a way to put it? It's correct. Maybe. Maybe. Actually, let me tr uh, try that here. Um, so I'm going to Update meshes rectangle. Oh shit. Or since I didn't save probably. So I'm just going to start over. Sorry. Create project. This repetition is probably good. Wall sign. Save. Export. Yeah, it's weird. It does that. Okay. I just want to do a test here. I'm going to extrude it manually. I'm going to save the project. Save project. Open. I'm just going to open the recent Thunder. And I'm going to go to representation getter. Oh. oh. Sorry, I didn't do it. Okay, there we go. I should say project. Open new. Open recent. So you did save it. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, that's just I guess good to know because ultimately hitting up at the update representation every time will, will kill a lot of people. <laughs> no. Yes. 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 No. You don't have to. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to pull this in here. And all, right. Um, all right. So I guess plot, adding materials, IFC materials, you can do that. Um, to do that. Maybe adding some layers to the world, uh, Ryan. I would really appreciate if you would show us that. Okay. Well, let's uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's create a, a wall then. Uh, from but yeah, please please wall. make a real wall instead of that box. Sure, sure. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna make a wall type from scratch. Um, I'm just gonna start over here. So you can start right anywhere you want. Sorry, guys. I have to leave. Okay, Yanis. Okay, we well, appreciate time. Uh, next time. Uh, Bye. Have a good time. Bye. Yep. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. So uh, just a bit of clarification here. When I, when I say layers, I'm thinking about like, for example, a plasterboard. 
uh, where you have different, you have uh, the frame and you have the plasterboard on top fixed on it and something like that, right? So different layers, not just a concrete wall. Yep, yep, no, I, I got you. Um, so like Revit, I don't know if you're familiar with Revit or ArchiCAD where the, the wall type can have multiple layers, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. The problem yep. is when you export from Revit, uh, you you still get only one uh, one wall with, with one layer. You don't see the different layers. Right. And, and, the, and the, my, my goal is actually how to get in IFC the different layers as well. Right. The right now in Blender BIM, I can show you, um, you can do multiple layers, I believe, but they don't, they're not, you can't visualize them in Blender BIM yet. I think eventually, okay, but yeah, sorry, it, it is possible to visualize it in any other uh, IFC viewers like Solibri or other tools. It doesn't need to be shown in a Blender BIM. Okay. I, I believe so. Um, I don't know if anyone on, on this call knows otherwise, but I think you you can do that. Yeah, I could be wrong. I could be wrong there. Um, well, regardless, do you want me to yeah show you how to just create a, a wall? Yes, yes. Okay. Please, uh, please do it. Yeah. Okay. And sure. uh, eventually, I can try uh, to if uh, I I will I can try to do the same. And try to uh, visualize it with uh, with another tool and see if uh, it shows all the layers. Okay. No, yeah. That'd Thank be you. Good to know for sure. So I'm just uh, putting my 3D cursor somewhere. Um, doesn't doesn't matter really where you put it. So I'm gonna add a um, an empty to start. So that's essentially a point, a Blender BIM point that contains information. So go to your object property here. Um, you want to change your products to element type here in the class to I've see wall type and this you can just keep those as default um, okay next step is to create a um, material because essentially I the layers within an IFC wall use a mate, material to assign their a thickness basically so we'll create our first uh, material so just put in a generic cube um, and go to, we'll create, you know, well in material and turn that created the blender BIM material. Basically. Now you have to, um, create an IFC material. So you just click on that and it just takes the same name. And then also it's good practice to add a style as well. So IFC style, I'm not hundred percent on this, but it's essentially, um, patterns um, that you apply to a surface and so it's good to just create both of those and so with that those two created you can delete that that cube um, let's actually just do two materials um, since we want to do two walls here uh, we can just, just say second material and create um, a style there and then delete that. So then go back to the empty that you started, select that, go to object properties here and scroll down to IFC object material. And you wanna switch this to um, layer set, I believe, yes. Yes, layer set and say plus. This interface is a little clunky. There's a lot of clicking around, but uh, you name the you know first layer, um, and we want to use this edit to wallet material there, and say click on that. Now you want to click on this edit button here, and you want to you know assign the thickness, so 2.5. Say okay, and then okay. So we got our wall type has one layer in it, a certain thickness. Now you can basically um, res it or instantiate it here. You go to the Blender BIM. Here's the um, wall type, and then this is the name of it, empty. So you just click on the type, and, and then it uh, instantiates it in, in world there. So that that is a wall. So you can 
you know, do um, like you do on a typical blender um, is to modify the, the dimensions of things. So going back, if you want to later, actually, we'll just duplicate this here. Later, you want to change the thickness of this wall. You want to change the type thickness, not the, the thickness of the instance. So if you click on any instance, there's a quick way to find the type basically object. Um, you can go to here, I've seen construction type and click on this little icon. And it basically selects your type object to so the empty. And so from here, you go back and do the same thing to change that layer um, thickness, you know, increase it there. And all three of them should be now adjust. Um, so go, going back to um, the question of adding additional layers here, I think this works. So let me try here. First layer. on that and okay see see there's two layers there now and we we'll want to click on that and adjust this and say okay and okay see i don't know if it changed the overall dimension of it though let's see here let's go one change Yeah, see, it didn't, yeah. See, it, it doesn't look like there's full support for it. Um, it might be in the IFC file, right? So you could, you know, when you save this IFC file, when you open it in a viewer, it might be there, but unfortunately it doesn't show here. So there's a, you know, I'd share this with. Um, Can you um, click on the tick box first? The tick box, sorry. <laughs> And then add a new element now, just to see out of curiosity. Yeah, across the material layer set, like ticket. And then let's add a new one, a new instance. Okay. Added new new instance. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the new instance, I guess, is works. But that's that's not the way it should work. It should update what's already in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I just don't know when you copy the, the objects. Are we allowed to just copy them like that? Yeah, yeah. You can actually, yeah, copy them both with like Control D or, uh, yeah, Control D. And it still, you know, maintains that connection. Well, you can see that the connection is maintained because, you know, if you change it here, all those walls change. Yeah, you're right. Well, the, the, the funny thing is, I think the global ID doesn't get updated, though. So maybe that's where the problem lies. Yeah. I, well, in all honesty, I think that the, the support is not there for it yet. Um, Just out of curiosity again, could you check the global ID of each of these instances? Sure. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> yeah, it should. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't have to um, create new global IDs. You, you, at one time, you did, but that's been fixed for a while. Yeah, yeah. maybe I just need to download the latest update. Sorry. Anyway, oh, no worries. No, I, I like these questions very much. And Ryan, you're using a Imperial Decimal Feet, is that? right yeah i think that what that is is if i put in one let's say um here i think it's one foot i think oh. pretty sure it's one foot yeah is that the question sure yeah i guess along the lines of like it's not like revit with one where you can work in feet and inches uh, well, you can work in, you know, in this particular interface, it's, you can do, you know, inches where if you want to do one inch, it'd be one over 12, you know, it's, it's kind of awkward that way, but you know, you can do that. But that supports math that like you could do one plus one over eight. I think you, you can do math. Yes. In there, I think, 
Um, let's see here. That's a six plus two. That. <laughs> you want an eight foot wall, anyone? <laughs> Aren't your units in feet in the project? What's that? Sorry. Aren't the units in feet? Like yes. The Yep, they are in feet. Yep. Okay. yep th this one is. Yep. Okay, okay. So um, let's just change this back to something reasonable. Um, it just confuses me. I'm from the metric system. <laughs> I know. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm from the states. We're we're backwards. This country's backwards. <laughs> So I guess uh, I'll go into working with walls more intelligently here. So if we got this wall, um, I'm just going to copy it around, rotate it. Uh, 90. So there are rudimentary wall tools here that you can use. Um, they are found somewhere. Tools here, architectural. So just like, you know, Revit ArchiCAD, you can use these tools to make your job a little easier. Select those two walls. You can do, you know, miter, brings them together like that. Um, use the L, there's a butt uh, joint there. Um, and then, it, you know, these tools everyone's seen. Um, it depends on the order you use to select on what how this uh, extend works, you know, similar to others. Um, and then you can um, flip the origin of the wall to see here, that little red dot there shows the origin. I think you can click on flip, it flips it to the other side. That That's similar to, um, you know, Revit that where the, the wall is controlled from, you know, the location line, whether it's exterior or interior. Um, I think you can put your 3D cursor, let's see here, Do edge, somewhere on the wall, select it and then split it. No, of course, it's kind of a glitchy split without it. Yeah, that might be a glitch. But it usually, it, it basically essentially splits the wall. It used to split the wall in two. Um, I don't know if I'm using that correctly, if anyone knows. Split. Yeah, I think it's a glitch, maybe. Ryan, uh, I don't yeah. know if you, if you can speak to a little bit of the workflow that you are using, like I take it you're not modeling in here, but uh, maybe just at a high level to understand where the strengths of Blender BIM are currently. Sure. Um, yes, I can do that. Um, well, this is, yeah, just there are obviously, uh, you know, other functionalities that Blender has, but just in, in our little world, I guess, um, I can show which we've been doing. Let me see here. Uh, let's just do a new, don't save. I'm going to import in file that Bruno from the uh, open source architecture community has been helping us on this project as well. Um, I don't know why I see open this. So like I mentioned before a little bit earlier on is that we use Blender BIM to basically model up large scale details like this here. And then we import that IFC file into Revit and then annotate it. Um, and so what's our annotations look like? So here it is in, in Revit. We basically annotate it in Revit. These material tags are intelligent. They're actually pulling out the IFC material name into the tag. Um, so yeah, we do all the modeling in Blender BIM and just annotating it in, in Revit here. 
Um, and we're all just using kind of simple extrusions here. If you click on any object and you go to the get representation IFC, it's basically just an extrusion here. Um, it's assigned uh, an IFC material and an IFC style. The crazy thing is that Revit uses the IFC style um, name when it imports and it assigns it to the material name in Revit, which is kind of odd, but that's just the way it goes. Um, it was nice in Blender here that both the IFC material name and the IFC style name and the Blender name are all bi-directional. So if you want to change the name of that, um, you can change it there and everything changes. So that, that's kind of nice. It makes it a little easier. Um, Did you try to use Vertroc for this instead of just using extrusions? Try to use what? Sorry? Vertroc for parametric modeling. Oh, the... yeah, I, I know, I know Sverjak. Um, I guess that would, I'm, that would be an overkill on this workflow. Um, I'm not, not quite clear on what, what you're thinking, what kind of functionality in Sverjak would you use? No, generally, I mean, I don't know, maybe you use these details, you need to customize them for different places. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, yeah, just this... in the, it can be reused on other projects as well. Yeah. Now this is a very, very dumb workflow. Essentially, it's, uh, it's stripped down to kind of a bare essentials of functionality in both in IFC and in Thunder BIM. That just mm -hmm. says, "Hey, we're not we're not going to use intelligent walls. We're not going to use intelligent roofs, and uh, you know all those types of things. We're just using simple extruded objects, and then we're going to assign a material, and then we're going to then we're going to bring it into Revit." Because then the fidelity of the import export is basically one to one, right? Then, because we have scenarios where we bring it into Revit, I can modify it in Revit and I can export it out again, and someone can open in Blender BIM and there's no uh, fidelity loss. So that's, and we're able to do that because we're using a very small subset of the IFC um, schema and, you know, the limited functionality of Blender BIM as awesome as it is, you know, it's just to use this Blender BIM for production right now, it's like, you know, I, I'm, from what I can see anyways, I'm limited to th this type of workflow. And it's it's kind of nice because I don't think these open source software, they're never gonna get to the, well, eventually they will, but it's never gonna be a day where in the near future where you can just embrace these tools wholesale and just throw away everything else. It's like, it's going to be a slow transition over time, or at least I think it's going to be so slow transition over time. And you try to find these wedge workflows that you can use these tools without, you know, killing your fees. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Is there any other questions on this? Is that this kind of workflow? If, if not, I can go back to the. I have a question. I'm sorry. Sure. sure. Um, how can I know if uh, a mesh is uh, like uh, extruded the uh, IFC or uh, uh, blender uh, normal mesh? Sure, that's a good question. Let's go back to that file. Um, to do determine that, you would for sure. It's kind of cumbersome, but. You would click on the object and then go to uh, get representation here. And if there and if there's an extrusion, if it shows up ah. as an extruded area solid, then you know it's an extrusion. Okay. Yeah. Br Bruno had r written a script that a really nice script that um, basically will go through all your objects and select those objects that are extrusions. So you can do kind of a query to see what ones are and what ones are not. I think that's on the uh, the OS Arch forum somewhere. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, anyone else have any uh, questions on what they'd like to see or next something else I could talk about? I'd love to see how to um, create
create a second story. So if we laid out a couple of walls and then put some kind of ceiling on it, how do you then do a second story uh, to make everything line up? Sure. Are you are you looking to like assign like your bottom and top of wall to like a story? And is that what you're looking for? Uh, well, I don't know how to do any of that. So so yes, okay. <laughs> but I would start okay. with just kind of. The well, the reason stuff. I ask is because that parametric uh, connection, right? Like you have in Revit ArchiCAD, where you can tie the top or bottom of your wall to a floor level parametrically is not there yet. Um, unfortunately, you can you can use some um, blenders uh, functionality called drivers that allow you to do that. But um, but yeah, it's not, you know, native yet to the to topologic. Blender. Isn't topologic doing this, that thing? Uh, I, I would, I think maybe to, yeah, the degree, I, I, I know a little bit, but topologic, um, not that much, but yeah, it's pretty powerful. So maybe that, that, you know, over time that harnessing, um, that will allow us to make the connections more intelligent, but let me just, you know, to show you just what you can do now is that, um, there's one or two ways to create another level. Um, I'd show you the first one, um, put your cursor, you know, wherever you want it, add an empty and then go to object properties here and change this to spatial element and uh, story and then say, I sign. So there, so looks like it's, a. Uh, Right now, the story is within a story. You want to click on that and move it out into the building. So now you have two stories there, if that, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Yep. And I think you can, I could be wrong. Um, just copy an existing one, select both. Can you duplicate it here? Duplicate connection. I don't know if this works necessarily. I'm just testing to see if the, oh no, it's, see the, the, the GUIDs here are the same. So let me try to, to add, basically add another GUI or change the GUI. You would um, click on that, I believe, and that changes it. So there you made another story from an existing story. You just got to make sure that um, the global ID, sorry, is um, different. A lot of times this is a weird way. It's like if you d duplicate the, the thing in the outliner, it doesn't duplicate the global ID. If you duplicate it in the scene, the, the 3D view, it, it does then change your uh, global ID. So it's just one of these quirks that you, you learn about. Did I mention this is alpha software? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes has a question. It seems. Sure. Sure. Go for it. Um, I think you can also click on the uh, building empty object in your property. Well, the tree scene collection thing. Uh -huh. And uh, no, the building. Oh, the building. Okay. The one, no, the the actual empty object. Oh, entity. Sorry, this one. Yeah, if you scroll down, I think there is like something that says add a story or something. Is it in the object properties? Either that or in the scene. Not sure anymore. Uh, can you search like uh, add story? Maybe that will bring it up. No. Nah. Uh, yeah, maybe in the objects. Look at that there's something highlighted there. Oh, sorry. What about the object? Oh. Oh, ah. add buildings. Oh, okay, there you go. There it is, maybe it's something. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. Nice. Does that work? Did that work? Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. Cool. How does it, it know the how's the order set? How does it know kind of which one's the first floor or second floor and get the vertical elevation right? Well, you can go ahead. The attributes can also need to be modified, I believe. There's the uh, elevation attribute that may give you the, uh, uh, the height of that. And that doesn't necessarily change the empty object, like it won't move, it, it won't move its location. You would need to do that um, manually. <laughs> Does it make sense? I think we should improve that. Uh, but yeah, so that it drives the uh, the empty to move up. Now that'd be awesome. So if you had cha yeah, change that. Yeah. It changes. Yep. Yeah, it would make uh, obviously a lot more sense. Yeah. But to like um, create floors, um, you know. Floor types is basically the same approach to creating wall types, where um, you create a material and then you you know assign a thickness to the material. So it's basically the same um, approach. Do you want me to do that quick, or just before you leave the um, the stories, Ryan? The Generally, when you when you create stories, you know the elevation of it, and I would say if you, at least I've found the easiest way is to go into select the empty, go into the item, and uh, put the uh, z coordinate you want or elevation if you like. Now in the in the um, vertical bar, the vertical bar. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 do it slowly. I'll, I'll see. <laughs> you can do that, yeah. yeah. But you could also enter it manually there. If you go to the right and item on the top there, not in the no, no, left, left over here, no. Nope. Uh, no, the, the sideways ones. Um, if you set the yeah, group pro view, yes. So. Okay, okay, oh, I got you. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Is, did I mention I've only learned Revit a year ago? So. <clears throat> um, what else could we talk about? I guess. I'm sorry. Um, so apart from stories, can we create quiz? Great, what, sorry? Grids. Grid grids? Lies. Grids, grids, okay, grids, yes. Uh, yes, you can. Let me, um, let me just go back to the grid lines, okay. Um, I just kind of learned about grid lines the other day. So, oh, we can go into documentation too. It's, um, so to add grid lines, this is kind of a weird location for it now that it's in mesh. Um, I think this will probably change, but that's how you introduce kind of a, um, a template grid, essentially. And you can see it in the outliner that it created this hierarchy here. And so in one direction, it's, you know, ABC and the other direction is zero, one, two, three. This is kind of glitchy too. Um, I try to duplicate these in world here and they don't necessarily um, work that I've seen. It's, so it's somewhat glitchy. But anyways, let's say we, we have a grid here that that's exactly what we want. And we let's just actually create um, a document or drawing. Um, so go to BIM documentation, uh, click on drawings here, and we and there's various things you can do, plan, section, elevations. Let's just do a plan and say plus. Basically it creates a camera in world here. And you can click on this in order to see what that view looks like. You can go to um, where are we here? orthographic scale 
and view you know, move it in and out. You can click the camera, you know, and, and G move it around how you like it. Um, you can change the the scale of the drawing. Let's do half inch. Sorry, again, Imperial. Um, and then yeah, let's create drawing. Hopefully, so. Uh, let's see here. Why did that not? Not sure why they didn't work. Let's no. try it again. Plan. I just want to click the go to the camera and create a drawing. Hopefully, <clears throat> yeah. Dion's working on. Uh, recording is on again. Let me uh, just start a new file because I know this is. Uh, well, let me actually open up a um, one that DMs use to troubleshoot. So here, Dan created this. It's a you know just a test file and it's got a bunch of views in it. If I go to drawings, click on that. These are already established drawings. You know the story. And this is how you turn on annotation, viewport annotation. Click on that. It shows up in the view, which is nice. Um, and then I'm going to just try to. Oh, that's what I probably did. I didn't create the drawing. OK. I think he just locked yes. himself out. Yeah. Closed it, I think. I was, I was wondering what happened. Yeah, I think he closed the wrong tab. Yep. So, so, sorry, guys. I closed all my tabs. <laughs> I exited out. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, can you talk a little uh, free cat? Is that on your radar, or has anyone here used it? I can't, unfortunately. No, I'm. Uh, I haven't dove into FreeCAD yet. <laughs> yeah, I'd be wondering if uh, there's any sort of interoperability from what is done here to also there, because I, I think they have probably more more tools available, perhaps. Yep. No, um, York is one of the you know main developers with the BIM um, part of FreeCAD, and I've worked with him a number of times. And we actually, for these large scale details that I was talking about, we've pushed it you know, in between FreeCAD and Revit and Blender BIM, like, you know, bi-directionally. So again, it, you know, it can be done. Um, it's, it's just, you know, we're using a s small subset of the IFC. Do you guys want me to go more into uh, doc 2D documentation on Blender? I have one question, Ryan. Sure. I see you have there that uh, add-on, the CAD add-on on the left side. Uh, do you... Do you use it? Uh, do you have a workflow that you can use this uh, at the same time with Blender Beam? What is that you said? Sorry, the, the CAD add-on you have on the left-hand side. You have some. Uh, there is that add-on. You can oh. you, can you use that together with Blender Beam to to uh, quicken the workflow? Yeah, uh, yeah. This is a, a plugin called CAD Transforms. Uh, Stefan is the developer on it. Um, this is tool basically allows you to, um, uh, it's, it's a more user-friendly way to snap around objects. Um, so I can just show you quick here, if that's engaged. Um, if you wanna move, you know, move something, like a lot of CAD programs, it lets you pick your move point first. You know, let's say you wanna move, click on that, and then it moves it from that point. So native Blender BIM, or sorry, native Blender doesn't necessarily allow you to do that that user-friendly. 
Um, there is a kind of a way to do it through 3D cursor. Um, and if you get used to it, it does work kind of nice. Um, but coming from, you know, uh, CAD background and BIM background, this tool is very helpful. I recommend it. You can also measure with it too. Uh, if you don't select anything and you um, type G, I think it is, you can actually measure with it, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, and then, you know, also rotating, say, you can, oops, you rotate. You know, that's that's similar to, you know, the CAD program that you're familiar with. I know there's probably more savvy people on this call. I see Dimitars here um, that could probably go into this more in depth than I can. Again, I've only learned Blender a year ago, so still rusty. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm interested in what you're showing because for me, Blender BIM is a big black box. I do know yeah. Blender very, very well, but Blender BIM not so well. Yep. And I'm interested, yeah, to see how you've been using it and what in what ways you, you see like some workflows which you already answered. Sure. No, yeah, it's, um, I think w one of the reasons I'm able to kind of pick up Blender BIM is that I've followed IFC development for probably 10 years now. I'm not a, a developer, I'm not a coder, but I've just followed it long enough where I know enough to be dangerous, I guess. And so knowing the schema to, you know, whatever uh, certain level allows me to kind of get into this quicker probably. Um, so uh, unfortunately that's, <laughs> You know, I wouldn't recommend the, the casual observer trying to understand and get into IFC because uh, it's, it's pretty uh, convoluted and complicated. Um, but it, it does help to, you know, when Dion and her, um, York are basing their these plugins off of that structure, it allows you to pick it up quicker, you know. Yeah. Cool. Um yeah. Somebody also mentioned something about FreeCAD. I could possibly talk about that in my experience, if there's still interest in that. Sure. Well, I know for sure if you said that on like Twitter or whatever, that there would be a lot of yes interest. <laughs> yeah. I you know I would definitely be interested too. It's one for me. You know, I just only have so much time to dedicate to learning stuff. And so with Blender BIM, it's just, you know, dedicating time to learn it and, you know, eventually, yes, get to FreeCAD, but you got to pick your battles. Well, yeah, I mean, it's good to know the people who are using the different tools to know sort of what their strengths are. Like it, it's helpful to see, for example, your Revit workflow and how you're describing it and not losing any fidelity, right? Going back and forth. Uh, so I, I'm, Definitely interested to hear. Yeah, FreeCAD has other strengths that should be on our radar. Then we could kind of keep that in the back of our minds as we develop these workflows. I I also like the idea of just you know, yeah, periodically um, having this roundtable, make it more of a roundtable, uh, and just talking about Blender BIM uh, more casually and you know once a month maybe or whatever. I it, you know. I'm not sure someone started that that concept on the on the uh, OS for, forum, um, and I think it's a great concept that we just keep going. Maybe they're on this call. I don't even know. They're on uh, apparently. Say again. Sorry. I didn't get that. But I guess what what is your experience, Dimitar, then on FreeCAD? Mm -hmm. So I, I have an active project 
at the moment that I uh, maybe try to put in too much time into learning FreeCAD and I can share it with you because it's a small private project. So uh, how do I sh share screen? Is it toggle screen share? Yeah. Uh, it's the third button from the left, I think. Screen two. There you go. Yeah, cool. So this is, oh, hold on. It's a weird pin. I think, uh, Ryan, you might have pinned your window. Is that? Oh, work? okay. Let me, let me try here. Let me try to stop sharing. Is that, does that help? I guess, should I pin my window now? Let me stop sharing as well and then start sharing again. Okay, so this is a project. It's a it's a clinic that I'm working on at the moment. And I probably spent way too much time <laughs> trying to do this in FreeCAD. And in the end, I had to go back to Revit, good old trusty friend Revit, just because of documentation. And I'll show you what the live project looks like. So that's the live project in FreeCAD. Um, and basically, FreeCAD can do everything. The trouble is, it's very, very manual. So things that you know you would take for granted in Revit, for example, like chairs and things like that that have a, a embedded 2D representation, you have to really manually do that in here. And that takes a lot of time and the workflow is not quite set up for that. And then the other big challenge that I had was the topological naming challenge, because to, to make wall joints look clean like that, I've modeled them all from one sketch in FreeCAD, which is really nice and seamless to do. But the moment you go back to your sketch and you add an extra wall, or you subtract a wall or the intersection between two walls somehow changes, then all your documentation goes out the roof. So that's the bit that I was quite struggling with. It's like uh, the families or blocks as they're called in Revit and other programs. Uh, they're very manual and you have to sort of link them all. Uh, the topological naming for walls and then documentation. Right. And and the trouble is, it's the, the, there's just, it, it's almost too free, right? You can organize your file in any way you want, which is great, but you can quickly get lost. And there are no like smart filters and things like that to automatically group specific elements based on a, a certain property. Now, I'm only saying that because I'm still freshly frustrated about it. However, modeling wise, it's way better than Revit. I mean, you can do a lot of things that you cannot as easily within Revit in regards to modeling. Probably not as advanced as you can in, free, in a Blender, but because they're all solids, you can export them really seamlessly and make them in families or, you know, IFCs and directly link them into Revit if you need to do that. Uh, and then Sheets was a whole different story, uh, which again, it, it's actually not that bad compared to other things out there like Visual Air Q for Rhino. And but IFC, the way I was using it doesn't work that well because to make the file a little bit more manageable, all of the furniture elements are links. Uh, but those links, for some reason, they don't really export that well as IFCs to go backwards and forwards with, between Blender, which I do anyways. But what I ended up doing is just exporting the base walls as um, an OBJ and then the furniture, because this is sort of a placeholder furniture. I just grabbed much nicer furniture in Blender to start to give a, give a sense of the visualization. One tool that has 
quite a bit of potential for me is uh, the curtain wall tool which makes this fairly straightforward and fairly easy however sometimes for a reason unbeknownst to me <laughs> it likes to flip itself let me see here's an example and I don't know how to flip it back, right? So instead of making the verticals, the verticals, it decides to make them horizontal. Have you tried to use real Thunder Branch at FreeCAD? I did once and I have, you know, commented a lot about him on the comments, especially about the behavior of, of, of these kinds of like uh, uh, more complex groups that have 2D information embedded into them separately um but that was it I, I, i'm yeah. trying to stick more to vanilla free cad yeah well because i the reason i bring it up is well the little i know about free cad uh my understanding is that that branch is trying to address that concept of things kind of flipping around like that yeah yeah to, the topological naming and in fact they're trying to slowly merge it into the master so that should make things a lot smoother uh but but beyond that i guess because uh, i mean architecture is a lot about space planning and areas and placing rooms is that any of that comparable to any of the other architecture focused tools so that goes into the documentation category for me and it doesn't really exist i've looked at all kinds of ways to like manually like subtract and break down spaces based on a sketch because there is no automatic way to do it at the moment. I'll show you how it works. For for spaces, you have to manually pick some walls, some wall faces to get them. Let's see if I can find my uh, faces, pages, project, walls, rooms. So here are the rooms. So that's what they look like. But each one of those rooms is actually manually put. So if I go to one of these rooms here, for example, and nope, don't need that. This is like, a, I think, a low hanging fruit for uh, uh, projects like TopLogic, where you could use that in order yeah. to you know, automatically create these rooms. But that's a that's a biggie. That's huge, right? Because all the time we're shifting walls and things around exactly. and moving them. And in this case, the way it works, sorry, it, it seems to be must have pressed something that Revit didn't, uh, the free cat didn't like. But like in this simple case here, if if you have a rectangular room and you move these walls around and maybe they're separate elements, it actually would respond to that. But the way I've modeled this is quite different. I probably wouldn't do it the same way again, which is having all the walls based on one sketch. So it, it does have some smartness into it, but you have to be careful. Then the room's boundaries don't work too well on non-rectangular rooms, in which case I have to draw a polyline, extrude that into a solid, and use that solid as a room. So I wrote like a very simple script to do that. For example, this room here, the room two cannot do it. So I, um, speaking of kind of round tripping between Blender BIM FreeCAD, I just shared a link um, there to a GitHub issue um, where York is trying to basically um adopt the same way um approach that blender bim does in terms of annotation so theoretically you get to a point where you can round trip annotation between freecad and um, blender bim well i guess any program that adopts that kind of fledgling standard that seems to be kind of coming about yeah and in in, in freecad there is kind of parametric dimensioning as well but again if as long as you do it in a way where uh you you're not limited by the topological naming issue then you're in pretty good shape for example if i draw a wall based on a line so 
I draw a line and then I draw another line and I create a dimension between these two lines or rather between the two vertices whoops Can't seem to be grabbing it correctly. Sorry for that. Let me do one last try. So from here to there. Okay. And now if I move this, okay, maybe there was a setting somewhere to, to, to make this yeah that's what it was you have to specify in the dimensions like a, a specific point in the properties and the properties are very powerful in FreeCAD, by the way you you have access to all those and they're all parametric in the sense that you can enter formulas and have cross links between two things but what i was trying to poorly demonstrate is that if these two elements are based on we create walls on them uh where did that wall go now that, that it can it has some of that but it, it's it's like too many steps in between for it to be useful for like a large project but we're having like a quick look at uh, a new project for example a potential i see a lot of pot potential in there for modeling custom things in fact one time i did a a section a parametric section of a very complicated building and it was all based off of a radius and uh, radii or proper arcs and circles work really well with, with FreeCAD in fact even better than Rhino and because Rhino actually doesn't have an, a proper arc it converts everything into a spline so a lot of that was quite useful to have in here but I do wish at the same point that some of the basic tools worked a little bit better, like walls and doors and windows, the, the really, really basic things. Um, they could work fairly well if you know what you're doing at the moment, but it, it does take quite a bit of um, effort, especially because in, you know, in architecture, things change all the time, right? So we move and yes. I can't even make a wall for some reason at the moment. I'm not sure why. Why are they disappearing? Anyway, sometimes we're, when you present, we're recording, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. As when we're presenting, all things always seem to go wrong. Uh, but yeah, I, I I really really want to use FreeCAD much more than I have the potential, and I'm faced with a choice. You know, it's either uh, with, with the deadlines that I'm dealing with is. I either have to invest, you know, three times more time to make those projects with FreeCAD or I have to become a developer, you know, have time to, to kind of code the tools that I really want. And I really wish I could do that, you know, so we can all benefit more from these kinds of tools because for me, that's true freedom. You know, everybody being able to design on the same page without having a paywall in a way. But we, we need a lot more love. And right now, from what I've seen between Blender Beam, Vanilla Blender, and FreeCAD, FreeCAD is the most architecturally friendly software out of those kind of three ways to compare it. Although I really look forward to Blender Beam or, you know, Measure It Arc or one of the other tools that are available for Blender to make uh, documentation a bit easier in Blender. For me, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, Blender BIM and FreeCAD because the core part of the BIM functionality really harnesses the IFC schema, which, you know, I'm, I'm excited about is that you need to get to the point where even the, you're not restricted to even the tools, you know, that the, 
the content that you're creating, whether it's Blender or FreeCAD, can be pushed around to various tools as well. So the underlying, you know, uh, structure is is open as well. Um, IFC is a tricky one, right? Because I, I mean, there's no way of getting around Revit because it's kind of everywhere. And it really depends on Autodesk to make IFCs work even better with Revit. So if that happens, there will be even more adoption. But the challenge is how do you make an IFC within Revit to use that in a way where you can kind of continue to edit your project? Well, uh, there is a possible actually. And uh, it, it, it is used a lot in Norway. And uh, so now everything in Norway, every project that starts uh, with the big uh, public uh, customers or clients, they start with requirements not for uh, David file or anything else, but IFC. Nice. And, uh, so, uh, and um, I'm very excited about this because in, uh, in, uh, for, from 1st of June, I will start in a job where actually I will do just that. I will look for a contractor who wants to employ and use IFC uh, through, through uh, the, the entire project from the planning to uh, building, to the building side. So it's going to be pretty exciting. And I know already people that are doing that. Uh, so it is possible. Uh, but uh, like I said, um, so, uh, what I found to be very important here is that the clients come with these requirements. Uh, and the... Uh, you, if you want to be a part of the project, you have nothing. You you cannot go any other way around it. Uh, so, it it is very important that this comes from uh, from the client, and it's easy when the when the biggest cl possible uh, uh, clients are coming with this kind of requirements. Uh, yeah, so uh, it is possible, but uh, it, it's very difficult to break the ice and to be uh, and to be a um, a model maybe. Well, I, well, I'm excited, and you're starting to see this in the last year or two, is that standards development, open source standards development, IFC, um, can be informed by open source development of open source the tools. So you can see that happening in just very early days between like FreeCAD and Revit for, with round tripping, you know, IFC annotation or simple extrusions is that, you know, we get to a point where it's like we hit that ceiling that IFC schema doesn't allow certain things, but hey, we got users that are trying to make this work. So let's figure out a way to establish an IFC exchange here that allow this to happen. And so having the development of the tools inform the standards, I think is a very exciting um, thing to see um, versus, versus the other way where you, you get you know, it's a priori where you get a bunch of people together and they're like, we should do the X, Y, and Z. And it's really not informed in the trenches by any development, right? Um, so I, I think there's a lot of potential there to, to develop the, the, the standards, open standards alongside the development of open source tools. Can I just comment on uh, basically both uh, BIM voice? I forget your name, but no, no. And Dimitar, I think you are, in a way, I'm also based in Norway, by the way. Uh, in Norway, like you say, Bim Voice, what is your name, please? <laughs> You're muted anyway. <laughs> My name is Petro, sorry, I forgot uh, about me. Yeah, I've watched some of your Bim Voice show. Uh, anyway, like you say, in Norway, yes, most of the major players, they demand that you deliver IFC. But how this generally works, and it's going to be complicated, I'll try and explain this as short as possible. What, what the IFC is mainly used for is for collaboration. for, um, yeah, basically BIM checking, uh, collision detection, etc. Like, and then back to Dimitar. Um, I totally agree. The main problem we have with Revit is 
rev it not in a reasonable way being able to point one deliver a proper ifc file and even worse not being able to import an ifc file for editing in any feasible way but i think this is this is what we see with all the major players it's a way of protecting their investments as i see it uh, they are basically the um <laughs> they, even though having started this standards business with ifc like both bentley and uh, and autodesk did once they got this running they saw that uh i'm not so sure because what from from um, an engineering point of view what you would like was of course to be able to have like we have in blender bin the ifc file as the native format and use whatever tool you like to edit it the way we see with uh, projects like you see petro in norway um one of the major projects we're going at the moment is a um new tube uh, project in oslo what is happening there yes they use ifc for collaboration all the architectural work is done in revit and the updating or checking of the actual revit files is also done in revit so <laughs> as a tricky business this did i make any point here or yes yes i understand um but uh, for, talking from my own perspective from uh, from uh, and thinking uh, forward to my uh, new job i will also act as client and the, the projects we are working on uh, we are going to be most of the time the client and the general contractor so there i can uh, be able to uh, we can decide what kind of requirements we want to have and uh, yeah uh, and uh, because you, you talk about for nebibana definitely it's a huge project you are involved uh, there are so many parts involved there you will definitely have uh, other challenges but i think uh, for me it's going to be a easier mission because i will have uh, some uh, blocks uh, simple blocks and uh, it's going to be easier because I see already there are other uh, general contractors who are doing this. Yeah. So, uh, but still, uh, it is, um, like I said, it is imperative that this comes, like the client has the most power in this. If the client doesn't do that, the general contractor won't come and just say, yeah, let's use open standards on this project. That will just not happen. I agree with what you said. I think I think Norway has come quite a long way when it comes to clients demanding IFC standards and even more than that, the content and quality of the IFC standards. Hmm. We've come a long way on that, but we see that the different contractors use different software. When it comes to architectural, it's general generally Revit, sometimes Archicad. When it comes to structural, it's uh, mainly Tecla, or quite a lot of Tecla. And we, yeah, and not to mention Magicad or Revit, which is a real pain, but never mind. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, that, uh, the, the issue of coordination is a very big issue, um, especially when all the, the, all the disciplines tr try to interact with each other. Uh, Right now, for example, I've done a couple of uh, projects and especially right, uh, I'm working on infrastructure projects right now and integrating all this kind of information. It's uh, quite challenging. That is one of the main reasons I started uh, diving into Blender. And uh, because I am, it is the only software in which I can have all the geometry I want, all the 3D geometry integrated in one place. So false I do the exports in the right way and I don't have problems with the coordinates. But um, I, I wanted to ask you, Ryan, if uh, in Blender Beam, is, is there a possible, if I export to, if I import two projects, two IFC projects, uh, can I merge them into just one IFC? Um, 
you can, but you need to use a, it's a patch, uh, IFC open shell patch to do it. Um, you got to use a little command line, um, but it's not, it's not as easy as like, you know, copying, pasting, or just opening up Blender and BIM. Merging, merging two IFC files can be done, but it's, I haven't done it yet, but I've seen people talk about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Carlo, uh, just a comment. Why do you want to merge them? Well, um, mainly because uh, I have the problem that uh, some IFC files come with a, a different uh, coordinate system uh, uh, than the other IFC file where I have it. For example, I have uh, IFC files where I have all the buildings around it, and I have my IFC file where there is a train station. And I also have the IFC file where we are modeling uh, uh, a bridge that is going to, to be able to use to, to cross over from one side of uh, the station to the other. And because they are all modeled in different software, uh, we agreed on a reference point, but when, they, uh, when the other engineers make the export, uh, they don't line up completely. That's why I put all the geometry in. Uh, I put all the geometry in, in in Blender, and I would like to have a federated um, IFC file in which, for example, I could also delete some of the trees that are very heavy in geometry and are just ballooning the size of my of my IFC, IFC file. So, just to make a little bit of cleaning. Having a little bit more, yeah. So you can you can you know clean up an IFC file uh, pretty easy. You know uh, if it's just one single file, you open it up in Blender BIM, delete what you want, and then just you know save and export out, um, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. But yeah, merging the two files, I think it. You know I haven't done it, but I think it's once you know the the workflow, I think it's kind of straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you I'm look at a comment again, Ryan, I would say merging files, if I understand it correctly, Colin, I would say keep the files as separate as you can, but make sure the coordinates are <laughs> at the same origin point, same orientation, etc. And if if like you say, it's it's obvious that for some you would like to have a local origin point. Uh, replacing the original point with the IFC Open Shell or other software, I think, is a better way to go than merging the files, because you will end up with terrifically new files. Hmm. Out of you. Uh, maybe you can link. You can link the file. You yeah, but if you link, at least in Blender, if you link at the moment, you're you're bound to have the same origin point. Ah, uh, okay. Currently, you're not. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. But linking another file in uh, in Blender, you are not allowed to translate it. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm not quite sure on that. I th I think you can, but I, I'm not a hundred percent. Uh, I don't think so, but yep. <laughs> so we can look at that. Yeah, it would uh, be nice. I I saw um, an image uh, from uh, Ryan. I think that uh, you linked the uh, R two uh, like uh, the, the structure from another file, and uh, you put it uh, in a wireframe view. Wireframe view. Mm -hmm. uh, is it yeah, correct, you can. Ryan? Yeah, you can use Blender BIM. You can use Vanilla Blender too in order to link in files. Um, so yes, it can be done. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. Like xref, basically you're xrefing files is the old ter term. So okay. Yeah. Actually, um, Ionis, he was on the call earlier. He wrote. Actually, it's added to the. Blender BIM now, where once you link in an IFC file, or it's actually a Blender file, you can actually toggle on and off whether it's wireframe or whether it's you know opaque. So that's kind of nice functionality. I show it on GitHub. Yep. yep. Well, 
Well, cool. Should we wrap it up? We're converging on two hours here, unless anyone else. <laughs> it's is getting late here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, 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 somewhere. I don't yeah. Know. it's beer 30 somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, cool, guys. I'm Well, I'm going to jet, um, but I'll, um, you know, share this video on the, the forum thread and hopefully we can make it more official and put it on um, the OS Arch uh, forum or a YouTube channel as well. So. Right. All right. Yep. I'm out yeah. here. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thank everybody. you for today. Thank yep. you for everything you showed us. You bet. Thank, thank you. Thanks. I enjoyed thank it. You. I like it. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you next Bye. time. Thank <laughs> you.